Jocelyn's place said fresh in her dice in the mail. That's pretty cool. I thought he fears ain't this cab as well. And I thought, now nah, forget it. In your homes to be there. I rolled up to the house about seven on the Ah, look, man, if you missed it, you just weren't there. I say go, go, go. Welcome to Cord Killers, our mission to report the intel from the front lines of the cord cutting revolution so you can watch what you want, when you want, where you want, on whatever device you damn well please. I'm Tom Merritt. Hey man, I'm Brian Brushwood. I got a question for you. What if what you want to watch is an awesome little house party happening at South by Southwest featuring the Possum Posse yeah, possibly luck, covering no, the possible Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme song and yet you're not there. You're out on the internet. I guess you just hose. Is that is that what it is? That's it. There's no way you could ever find every angle of the entire evening meerkatted by all of the people there in one video. It's not possible. That was really amazing. For those of you guys who don't know, we had a little uh, Diamond Club South by So Wasted meetup at the Handlebar in downtown Austin. And uh, Meerkat, of course, the hot new jam of uh, the darling of South by Southwest right now, instantly everybody whipped out their phones, started going live. Other people instantly started retransmitting that and, uh, and splicing together with multiple cameras camera views and it turns out that thousands of people were able to feel like they're right there with us even though the, they weren't there in person it was really a lot of fun one of the people that sadly was not there in person but we really wish he had been and uh, we missed him the entire time is mr scott johnson our guest for today's show head of frogs is that mm -hmm. do i have that right uh, it's of all frogs and by the way you guys made me super jealous when i everything was fine south by southwest whatever big crowded awesome music thing whatever i get it you guys tell me your stories but when you send me photos of fresh crawfish being killed and eaten <laughs> that's, when, that's when you really had me dude is, is that when i crossed the line dude they uh they set up it was food truck heaven man my favorite memory of the entire time was after the party we go to the food truck and they have like uh i don't know like a, a, a 300 square feet of astroturf laid out in the middle surrounded by food trucks and we all just laid down like school kids and uh and munched on our stuff you can go to your ruth's chris steakhouse and your fogos whatever but nothing be eating crawfish sitting on AstroTurf in the middle of South by Southwest. That was fantastic. Anyway, thank you to everyone that made that possible. And I suppose, Tom, should we jump in with a primary target? I like to call it the primary target, personally. Mm. All, right. All right. Maybe we'll go with that. Uh, we got news, people, about two of the forthcoming internet-only streaming services. Uh, right now, we've got one here in the U.S., Sling TV. Got two more coming. Which do you want to hear first? Should we let our guest choose? Uh, we have Verizon or Sony. We're going to cover both of them. Scott, which should we go first? Sony. I'm in the mood for Sony. Give me well, Sony. Sony? Mm. I got, I'm going to serve you Sony one way because there's only one story. Sony Computer Entertainment President Andrew House said in an interview with the Wall Street Journal that PlayStation View will launch within two weeks in New York, Philadelphia, and Chicago. And they've had testers running in all those cities for uh, months now. You can watch it on the PS3 or the PS4. They say they'll bring it to other platforms eventually, but that's where you can get it now. 75 channels and includes broadcast channels, things like CBS and Fox, NBC. It also includes cable channels like Comedy Central, FX, and Discovery. Significantly, they do not have a deal for ESPN yet. Uh, you can record shows and store them in the cloud for up to 28 days. And he also said in this interview he wants to head nationwide by the end of 2015. So is the difference between this and Aereo is that Sony made deals with all the content creators, and that's the difference? That's the yep. difference, isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah th th that and the fact that it doesn't cover any of the broadcast networks, correct, Tom? No, this has broadcast networks. Oh, wait, CBS, Fox, wow. NBC. Oh, uh, I was unprepared for that. Uh, uh, yeah, no, that's 100% exactly right. And, and uh, do you think that... You know, Aereo, unfortunately, had uh, the right idea by the rules and ended up getting ruled against, in my opinion. But uh, do you think that this would exist in a world where Aereo did not try its noble experiment? Yes. Really? <laughs> I really do. These, these kind of services were already being negotiated a long time ago. And I, in fact, I almost wonder if these kinds of services would be less likely in a world with Aereo succeeded because the networks would be continually uh, trying to struggle against them. Uh, but frankly, I, I, I think the overwhelming push was like, we need to figure out how to bring these services online. I, I think Aereo 
certainly showed that that people would pay for for local broadcast. But don't forget, Sling TV went out there without any broadcast networks. So well, I don't know. It strikes I, me I, it's I, possible in this conversation my personal gut feeling is it wasn't either to admit one that maybe Sony doing this and this stuff being in the works long before Aereo poked their head out, which, and I agree with Tom that these negotiations don't just happen overnight. So this stuff was clearly in the works. This might explain some of the lashing out that the networks did when Aereo you know, proposed what they were going to propose. All of them hated it. They were all against it. Well, why? Because that looked like maybe a threat to the lucrative deal they were signing with Sony and other providers. So I think that they, there's no way that these things didn't intertwine in some way. We just didn't get to see all of that. And I think it's, you know, it's a fair assumption that that went down. So what also, about the ESPN? It doesn't look like they got ABC yet. They uh, keep, yeah, they that's... talk about, you know, no ESPN and they don't mention ABC. Right. That's that's where I was going to head next is, is do you think ESPN has a specific deal worked out with, because uh, Sling uh, got a partnership with them, right? Yep. Uh, do you think that, that that part of that deal says you have to hold off for some amount of time before you can... Go to other networks. Well, ABC, I doubt CBS, it. Or ABC and Disney, or aren't they all Disney? They're all Disney. Yeah, you, correct. ESPN, yeah, that ABC Disney. I my my failing on the ESPN on Sling TV was Sling TV had to give ABC anything it wanted to do this, and there's no percentage in ABC agreeing to be exclusive on Sling TV. I think ABC Disney is just like wants you to give them a lot, and Sony is holding out for a better deal. Right on. Uh, uh, so you mentioned two tantalizing. Yeah, yeah. let's talk level. about Verizon. CFO Fran Shamo told an investor conference that Verizon's internet-only TV service will launch this summer and be aimed at people who want to consume on wireless connections. Programming uh, has not been announced, although they did announce a deal with DreamWorks Awesomeness TV. There will be 200 hours of new shows coming from them awesomeness tv will be at one of the channels aimed at teens and there'll be another channel called dreamworks tv aimed at families with some of dreamworks biggest characters non-stop shrek reruns that's what yeah. this means we should all run in fear we don't want this service i don't want to see it's Trek, new. Shrek they said all it's original. Day. uh well yeah no they said it's originals but but to me the more interesting part is the fact that this is a verizon over the top uh thing intended to be for wireless use and of course wireless is the home of of uh thou shalt not watch netflix over wireless because you'll run against your data cap like like do you aren't those all gone though i think they said they i think they've gotten rid of all of those restrictions now uh oh, wait, wait, with oh da you mean data you caps? mean like just you on your own like watch too much netflix on the lte Co correct like like yeah, my, yeah. my my in-laws spent a, a couple years like living in an rv park because they wanted to travel around a lot and they had crappy wi-fi there so they went two years with just no netflix and they they were moving to be cord cutters they're 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 they bought a Roku box and that stuff, but they couldn't watch Netflix full stop because even if they watched it and tethered it on their phone, they would instantly go over their their 10 gigabyte cap or whatever. So my my question is, does Verizon offer any kind of doesn't count towards your cap thing if they have this service? And if they do, do they, you know, does that open up a whole new can of worms on the net neutrality side of things? Uh, the FCC said that zero rating a service does not violate net neutrality when they put out these low, low recent open internet orders. So it would be very interesting to see how this annoys whom if Verizon were to zero rate it and say, we're going to have a TV service, it's going to run over LTE, and if you got a data cap, our service doesn't count against your data cap, because the FCC is going to say, yep, that's fine. And then all of a sudden, a bunch of people are going to say, that is a violation of net neutrality. These rules are not strong enough uh, and start a whole other thing. Uh, on the other side of it, too, why would we want this? <laughs> okay, well, well, I'm assuming that it will not be Verizon branded, although... Or it should not be Verizon branded, right? Let's say if it came out with, uh, you know, a uh, uh, toenail the service, and it's like it's a competitor to, you know, Amazon Prime, Hulu Plus, uh, Netflix, and toenail the service. Those are the biggest players in the game. I mean, I, in that regard, it's just another, it's just another uh, player in the house of cards, right? Although, do you make this available to AT and T and T Mobile subscribers if you're well, you have it to, towards right? a wireless subscription? You I don't mean, have to. No. I assume that. I assume that they can't just say only Verizon customers get this. 
this. If they do oh, that, yeah. they're they, they're severely they, limiting their access. I don't. I, I they are going to have to open that up. Well, no, no, no. I, but I, but that's fine. exactly what HBO is doing with Apple right now. They're yeah. saying only Apple devices can get HBO now. So yeah, after so like three months, though. So as soon as that ends, that'll that'll you know give them whatever we learned from that three months, and then it'll show up everywhere else. So they could do an exclusivity thing, try to keep it in house for that first little bit. It's like Sony saying, well, it's only PS3 and PS4 for ours for now, but they plan on moving it out to other devices. So. It, I don't think it helps anybody to try to have your own little weird ecosystem only available on your stuff when it comes to these subscription style services. It behooves them to have it freaking everywhere. And if Verizon didn't do that with their toenail service, <laughs> they're insane. Service may not be called toenail. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you guys that it would be really very stupid uh, to do it that way. I'm also not going to be shocked if that's what it is. I Man, I'd hate to admit it, but that's exactly what I was thinking as well. It's like, I think that's the worst possible way to do it. Wouldn't be surprised if that's exactly what we got. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's take a moment to thank the folks who make this show possible. Patreon.com slash cord killers is full of them. 2051 folks who see a little bit of value in the Cord Killer show and are willing to give a little value back. We don't even ask for that much, Brian. We're just saying, you enjoy the show, you can afford to kick us a buck, go ahead, please do it. You know, and people, some people get caught up in the whole, like, well, I don't got a lot of spare cash laying around, but tell us this. If you ran into us at South by Southwest, would you say, I really value your show, I'd like to buy you a beer? And then $7. $7 is what a beer costs. Guess what? That turns out for an entire year of programming, what, like a uh, 30 cents an episode? Maybe? Yeah. No, not even. Uh, uh, no, I guess seven dollars a beer a year is all we ask. There you go, a beer a year from everyone a year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, thank you to everybody who does do that. Patreon.com slash cord killers, keeping the cord killing coming. Let's move on to the signals intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> So speaking of HBO now, which is exclusive to Apple devices, unless you've got cable vision, uh, according to Variety today, cable vision will offer HBO now to broadband only subscribers. Of course, it might be after the exclusivity is over with Apple. They haven't announced the date. Uh, they will provide pricing and other details about how HBO now will be made available to broadband subs in the coming weeks. But this is what HBO has been trying to do on the other side. They got their their digital only, and when they they made a point of saying Apple was a digital only exclusive, now they're trying to get the ten or so million people who have broadband from cable providers but don't subscribe to those cable providers' TV service and get those cable people a little more money by selling them HBO now. The cable. Providers have been very resistant to this idea because they would rather use HBO as a tool to convince those broadband-only subscribers to move to TV. And HBO has been saying to them, that's going the wrong direction. That's a losing battle. Let us help you add more money to your broadband subscribers. So, so hold on. So you're telling me, let's say uh, you, uh, Cablevision's the only one who has this deal. And I'm with Time Warner. Are you telling me that if I'm with Time Warner and it's and I have an Apple device, I guess I guess the rules right now are, no matter where you are, if you have the internet and are on an Apple device for the next three months, you could definitely get HBO now, right? Or In fact, as I understand it, Brian, and I, I may be wrong about this, if you have the internet and you sign up through Apple, you can watch HBO now anywhere you have the internet, even on your desktop. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Great. Okay. But in that regard, what is Cablevision offering? Like, Cablevision like, is saying, hello, subscribers of Cablevision Broadband who do not pay for our television service and don't want to sign up through Apple for HBO Now. We will sell you HBO Now. I, but but uh, <laughs> I, I guess I guess starting after the exclusivity and also. No, well, maybe not. No, maybe not, because that was that was why I made it very clear. Apple is a digital only exclusive and Cablevision is is a cable provider. So HBO left the door open to say, oh, we might have a cable company sell it, though. Oh, got it, got it. So, okay, got it, got it. Okay, so Apple will have its service, and they can decide who they have helping them resell it. And right now, the first partner that they have is the uh, Apple uh, Apple company. So for hardware, if you're on an iOS device, you could probably sign up and, and, and do HBO now. If you have an Apple TV, and according to you, if you sign up through Apple on the desktop, so they were doing wiggle room saying they are our digital partner exclusively for the next 90 days. Uh, so in other words, HBO does not have 
a storefront at HBO.com saying, hi, we're selling HBO Now. They're allowing other people to sell HBO Now, and they're going piece by piece to be the, to, to partner with people to do it. And it's exactly the way they get the cable companies uh, to drop the argument that if you sell your own service directly, then we're not going to market for you anymore because you're competing with us. HBO's like, no, we're not. Got it. We're letting Apple sell it the way we let you sell it, Comcast. But why not also sell it to your broadband-only subscribers and make even more money? This is the manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer model. I get this now. They are only manu. We manufacture the HBO now, and we <laughs> wholesale it to you, and you yeah. guys retail it. Yeah, That's what's make, happening. We make the game. We make the thrones. Yeah. You guys yeah. just ship the thrones and the games and you do it through your retail channels, your stores, however the hell you want to get it into okay. people's hands. That's what you do. This is amazing because you realize we live in an age now where I genuinely could not comprehend this model until I realized that you were describing to me the way business has done in capitalism for thousands of years. I was like, oh, that's right. Usually there's a distribution chain and that prices increase as you go down the, the stream. Well, and why would HBO do this, right? Why not keep all the money themselves? Uh, I, I don't know. I think it's it's really building these relationships. Transitions, so that, keeping so people they happy. they blow it on the television-only side until later on. Yeah, they're holding hands. They, they, uh, they had analysts who got together, and they say, this is the only way you can make the jump and become enjoying that awesome swimming pool that that netflix is currently king of right now yeah and it'll still be worth it you'll still make enough money uh etc 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 so yeah cablevision the first to, to bite on that of course cablevision also was one of the the uh, broadband isps that allowed netflix to bring their devices into cablevision's centers without paying without netflix having to pay anything whereas comcast and at&t and verizon all fought uh, Netflix and said, no, you have to pay us extra to do any kind of interconnection like that. So uh, Cablevision's a little more forward thinking on these things sometimes. Well, par partially because they're you just you just name them in kind of order of size. So they're kind of the bottom rung uh, compared to all those other names you mentioned. So it behooves them to sort of try to get in there and get smart about this stuff early. Yeah. And they have there less to lose, I suppose, than the big guys do. So it's good. Yeah, Cablevision has 2.68 million video and 2.76 million broadband customers compared to 100 million or so uh, total customers in the U.S. Sure. Hey, uh, Brian, yep. you look like you need to gear up. I, I've been feeling a little bit peaked. Yeah. Ain't gonna lie. All right. Yeah. Let's just get some. Get that gear people. on. So, Jenko Wreckers, uh, who used to write for GigaOM before GigaOM uh, went away, is still writing. Thankfully for all of us on Medium. Go first of all. Go check him out. Medium.com. You spell his name J A N K O. R O E T T G E R S. I'm probably always pronouncing it wrong, and I apologize, sir, but you do a great job covering things, and people should go read you on Medium and support you. Uh, one of the things he posted was looking through those FCC filings. He found that Roku had filed for two new models of Roku streaming box uh, the 4210X and the 4230X, as they're called in the filings, feature no changes in hardware or in existing RF relevant portion which is why they have to file with the FCC. However, they also don't have an Ethernet port. So what Janko's uh, suspecting here is that the Roku 3 is going to remain out there, but the Roku 1 and the Roku 2 might go away and be replaced by these Roku 3-like boxes that just don't have Ethernet and maybe different kind of software running on them. So this is like, uh, like sticks. This is like fire sticks. or I mean, I know they're not no, exactly... No, no, these are, these are boxes. Right, right. but boxes. but they function they, like sticks yeah, because they're, they're wireless. I think those yeah. things are small enough. They also look like tiny little Roombas, by the way. Um, <laughs> but anyway, the, I think they're small enough to kind of be considered in that same class. We don't know price yet. Do we know price? Uh, no, we don't know anything. In fact, all we know is that they are basically the same thing as the Roku 3 but without an Ethernet port. I'm going to guess. This is just a guess. I'm guessing $39 and that they are their wireless option for people who would normally buy a stick or a Chromecast or something like that. But, yeah. but, but to what you benefit? Look, you get to look at it either way. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, so so here's what's amazing to me is the uh, – uh, uh, doggone it. I had a thought and then I – just thought about how handsome Scott Johnson is. And it's hard, dude. I apologize. This happens everywhere I go. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. In the uh, mirror. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, forget it. It's lost. It's gone. Well, what I what, what Scott was saying is that, you know, these are like the fire oh. sticks, but but in box form. I, I do <laughs> remember. I do remember my point, which is which is that, uh, you know, when you talk about cutting the cord, never would I have thought that the cord you would be cutting would be the Ethernet cord that you would <laughs> accept. But again, we've talked about this before. Convenience trumps fidelity. Yeah, you get a jankier signal over wireless. But man, is it convenient. It's a whole one less thing to plug in and it makes sense for some kind of revision for this to go away and this is again we've talked about this when we when we you know prattle on about net neutrality stuff uh you know i'm convinced that the the internet of the future is going to have precious few ethernet cables anywhere but the backbone everything's going to be wireless i don't the way think most this is the first to. roku box without an ethernet cable either i think that if i'm trying to look at the roku one specs here to to confirm well, no, this, and, and, and again as as i tend to do i'm looking at trends not where we are but but where things seem to be going you know yeah and 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 that I would think this would be much more significant if they were saying the new Roku 3 doesn't have an Ethernet cable. To me, this just sounds like they're upgrading the internals of the 2 and the 1. Uh, you know what? It, they have. They already. I'm, I knew this sounded familiar. The one that you're thinking of probably is the Roku stick. They have a stick already. Well, yeah, yeah, Roku does have a stick too. Yeah. So that's probably the one that I saw. So I take yeah. back my prediction. I don't know what the hell these other ones are for, except maybe it saves them money on the hardware and they can sell them for cheaper. Well, but here's the thing. I did a test. So I took my Fire TV uh, and a Fire Stick because those are the two kind of equivalents to test. Right? Stick has no Ethernet cable. The Fire TV does. Tried them both out. I could not tell the difference between what I ended up receiving. Maybe a little longer buffer on the stick, but essentially got the exact same kind of quality and service. I didn't have hiccups. I didn't have hangups or any of that stuff. So just a little empirical evidence that means nothing. I tried stick versus standard fire. And stick and fire seem to be about the same to me. Well, and keep in mind, I, I also think you're right. I think this is a bit of two players of the same game. You know, last week, Tom speculated that the Apple TV price drop was really just them liquidating old stock. Uh, stock. You know, there they, they, they was a way for them to act like something new had happened, even though literally nothing had changed. And they're just clearing out, you know, like, oh, this aging inventory has to go. Likewise, Roku's like, OK, the new price peg is this. You know, we essentially have the same tech. What what can we do to repackage stuff to make it feel new and different? And it's like, well, let's try. You know, the most intuitive thing is to add stuff and sell it as a bundle now. But they, but sometimes the counterintuitive play is, what if we take something out and give a reason for why this is now a new, cheaper version? They're of the not thing? taking anything out. I just confirmed this, uh, and so I did a horrible job of setting this story up for you guys. I apologize. Roku One and Roku Two don't have Ethernet in them but they have significantly slower internals as well what the story is here is that they filed for two models that don't have ethernet just like the roku one and the roku two but have significantly upgraded internals because they're the same internals as the roku three mm. so what it seems like they're doing is saying let's upgrade roku one and roku two so they're not so slow and janky and they're more capable uh but we're not going to add an ethernet port to them uh, and and that that way they'll we'll sell them as a lower version and i don't know what else will be different in their problem. And that's what Janko Rector's suggests. Maybe it's software related. Uh, I could see all of that. But, but, but again, I, I don't know that any of the changes you mentioned undercut either of the points that, that were presented so far, right? You tell me. Uh, no, you tell us by writing us at cordkillers at gmail.com. <laughs> all right. Uh, you can also express your opinion and love for the show by sending us candy. Uh, no. Also voting in the podcast. Yeah, I was about to say, let's. I would much rather have your votes than your candy. <laughs> That's true. We'll, we'll get super fat. Uh, can, wait, wait, Brian, how can they vote for Cord Killers but also vote for Scott's shows? Because Scott's a great guest on the show, but he has all these great shows that he does himself. Mm, turns out you can't vote for Cord Killers. We, did, we were not nominated. However, your show, The Daily Tech News Show, Tom, and my show, Night Attack, with Justin Robert Young, have been nominated, and a bajillion these shows on the Pro Frog Pants Network. I, I am so amazed by this. For years, it's been five or six years that we keep showing up nominated on the podcast awards, and every single time, in every category, I look, and it's like everyone I'm up against are all my best friends. And I'm like, Ugh, I'm not going to campaign against my friends. And this... Through some awesome cosmic lightning strike, it turns out that none of the shows I care about are competing with each other, and we're all best friends, and so so we've got like the Frog Pants Diamond Club All-Star Slate, so if you go to t2t2.eu slash pod awards... They've got this amazing setup where you can install a little bookmarklet. It'll guide you through, make it super easy. You can vote once per day 
per email per uh, IP address. Uh, so yeah, and then and then more importantly, you have to verify your vote afterwards because if you don't, it is uh, it's um, uh, not counted. And this is what I kind of love about it is that it's just enough of a pain in the ass to vote that only the people who really care are going to do it. And so this is this is very much a popularity contest. This well, is let me, student let me government. run down these names because I haven't memorized. You got sure. Night Attack in two categories. You got Daily Tech News Show in the, in the tech category. You have Film Sack in the film category. That's a show I host. The Instance, also one I host in the video game category. Please help us win there. My gosh, I want to win that one again. Uh, what's the oh, and the Morning Stream in the uh, Think Comedy category. Uh, what, who am I forgetting? Uh, that you're it? That's it. <laughs> Uh, by oh, Daily Tech News Show. Oh, you did mention that. Yeah, okay. I did that. Um, I think got them all. But Hope by the way, in a in a shocking twist of 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 perfect opportunity and irony, uh, the, the morning stream is up for comedy, but Night Attack is not. We did not make the cut for comedy. We are up for best mature podcast, which is ironic because we're not the most mature show that you've ever seen. Yeah. The categories have issues. There's no question well, about it. Well, you I know, mean, since Night Attack moved from comedy to talking uh, a lot about Syria and the <laughs> Crimean situation, <laughs> I, I think it's understandable. Oh, that it I forgot one. Mature. Coverville. Sorry. Coverville in the pod safe music category, which is also a dumb category, but but Brian should win that as well. So Coverville is the other one. Yeah, I absolutely. I'll tell you what. You install the bookmarklet, you click on it, and, and you have to cast the vote. That's per the rule. You can't have any kind of script that casts the votes for you, but the bookmarklet just basically keeps you from hunting a bunch. It's like, click this one, click that one, click this one, and go. And then verify right. that vote, and then let's move on to the front lines! Front lines! Hey man, a long report on the state of YouTube quotes an unnamed YouTube partner saying that they were approached about being part of a subscription YouTube service would you pay for a top tier YouTube content? And more importantly, what would you pay and what would you insist from it, Scott? Oh, gosh. Uh, 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 I don't know. What do I want? I don't know what I want. Uh, let me give you a hint. I'm, uh, I'm in your corner. How about this? No ads. What if, what if you could pay and have no ads? Would you pay All for right. that? No ads I might pay for. Uh, movies I can't get any other way. Uh, uh, TV shows that are original and cool, finally, on that service. Uh, and then I think that's it. No ads would be great, though. Well, it's going to be no ads, but it's going to be the TV shows you get now from YouTube, from YouTube Originals, and you're not going to get any movies. What are what are their original? Are their originals crappy? Are they any good? It's uh, all well, just dumb. It depends. How old are, How old are you? Are you over <laughs> or under twenty? I am over twenty. Okay, it, then no, they suck. There are some really, really good originals there, not necessarily the popular ones. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Nielsen says 36% of U.S. households subscribe to Netflix, 13% to Amazon Prime, 6.5% to Hulu Plus. It's growing, but still not the majority. What happens, Scott Johnson, when those numbers pass 50%? Uh, these, all the networks in the world suddenly change their tune, and everybody has a streaming app, and then they all fight, and that bubble bursts, and then they all decide, well, we got to do this together. So then they all work together and create some kind of big conglomerate streaming service that tries to kill everybody. Uh, but everybody starts to scatter from cable and Comcast uh, sighs a big giant sigh of relief because they have all the internet uh, customers and they're all getting the, the TV shows via IP now and they don't care because their business went from cable to internet uh, without having to blink an eye. Can I say, and again, I've, I'm still marveling at this. There was a time when not as a joke, we we th we called Amazon Prime the RC Cola of, of the big three online providers and man were we wrong and i couldn't be happier congratulations you say we you mean me and you well yeah <laughs> <laughs> and me i love it alan tudyk and nathan fillion have raised almost two million dollars for a web show called con man about two st stars from a cult classic sci-fi show that was canceled too soon sound familiar one fillion has gone on to stardom the other tudyk pretty much makes his living from cons will, will this fill the firefly shaped hole in your heart uh it's the closest thing I think we're going to get. What do you guys say? I'm excited about it. I think it sounds like fun, regardless of uh, whether or not it's a classic. I think we're all ready for it. We're going to be forgiving of anything about it that seems low rent. I'm totally stoked for it. These are fine actors. They do great work. Andy Tudyk was amazing on Justified one season ago. I don't know if you guys remember his brief role as a hitman. Amazing. He's the voice of the iRobot and iRobot. There's nothing these two can't do if you get them together. 
That's a bunch of random. Pets. I can't wait for the cameos from Jewel State, Marina Baccarin, and Sean Mayer, and you know all, all Ron Glass, all all of those folks. I, I hope they all make an appearance at one, and I'm sure they will. This is, I'm will? really looking forward to this. Uh, uh, real quick, extension, extension. Uh, uh, the inimitable. Uh, I went to talk to Justin Robert Young. I was like, Hey, man, did you see this? Uh, this is what they're doing. Uh, it's like the Firefly Gang. They're gonna do some stuff. And he's like, That's great, man. So he, they got uh, they got Joss Whedon to write for it. I'm like uh, no, no, they didn't get Joss Whedon to write for. Oh, oh, but he's but Joss Whedon's directing, so that's why it'll be good, right? Like no, no, it won't be like. And he was like, eh. but it's not that. It's not a Joss Whedon show. It's no, an, I, it's I, I know, I know, but do it but a show. So it's just important to remember that it's not just the faces that make things great. It's also the writing and direction, and it's all the behind the scenes people that made for the magic of Firefly. So you took an extension just to piss on our enthusiasm. <laughs> Not just yours, the entire internet's enthusiasm. Okay. Right. Really, you know. Does Adam Baldwin not show up or not? Quick, what's no. the over under? No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. Right. In fact, there'll be some snide joke about it. There'll be. In fact, somebody else will come in, clearly a parody of him. Yeah. That Justin will, will make an appearance. I guarantee it. HBO programming president Michael Lombardo told Entertainment Weekly he'd prefer to have ten seasons of Game of Thrones, but he'll have an honest conversation with the showrunners. Here's the quote. If they weren't comfortable going beyond seven season, I trust them implicitly and trust that's the right decision, as horrifying as that is to me. Lombardo's going to force this, isn't he? No. No, no, no. I no. think he is. I think uh, every so often somebody speaks honestly in a soundbite, and I think that's what this is. This is somebody... Who, no, oh wait, wait, you don't believe me, Tom? Tom, just mocking you because I know you can see me and nobody else can. Okay, so it's like no, it never happens. No one ever speaks honestly. <laughs> I think I think this is one of the rare cases where he's like, man, I would really love ten seasons, but I acknowledge that that would be a difficult thing, and one of the rare times where HBO is trying to get more than a, than than a full run of shows than less. Is this the guy with the shirt all unbuttoned on the stage at the Apple thing or not? Is that the same guy? No, different guy. <laughs> That's all I wanted to know. That's all I care about the story. <laughs> that was Plepler. Hey, man, Twitter is testing a feature on its phone, uh, uh, its phone app called TV Timelines that shows tweets, videos, GIFs, and photos related to the show broken down into highlights, media, and all. Do you want this, Tom? No. Uh, Scott? Yes. Oh, I, I want I want it in the hugest way because then if they do this, you realize you might be able to uncheck filter. Like I would like to not see spoilers of of this of Saturday Night Live or whatever. No, it this doesn't do that at all. No, no, but, but that down the road you got. It. First of all, uh, I would I, like them to do that, Brian. But this will. That, I mean, I, I already can click on a hashtag and see everything in that hashtag. All this does is break it into three parts. Mm, no, no, no. But it makes like a feed with all of them from the from the stuff I saw. Just, I'll tell you what, you, they're, you they're can get by clicking on the hashtag. They're testing a feature with their app, and that's the part I don't like, is their app. I would like to use other apps and have this same sort of thing. I'd like this to be a thing they can API into so the TweetBot and other preferred apps can use it, not just the Twitter app. Hmm. I do agree with Brian that getting rid of the spoilers would be good. Season 3 of House of Cards was shot in 6K. Even though the masters were delivered in 4K, and the 6K versions merely sit in a production house archive, Scott Johnson, is this forward thinking or just a waste of money? They're just sitting well, there. I have friends in uh, both California and New York and New Jersey. Our mutual friend Eric Van Skyhawk does work for Nickelodeon, and everything they shoot is in 8K or more. Uh, and they do that not only so they can do a lot of sort of cropping in that 8K image and, and even get some, you know, some really great multiple 1080p angles on things, but also because they are convinced that one day they're going to need that 8K or that 16K or whatever cameras people are using. Because one day we'll be able to deliver that kind of content. So they are. I think they are just doing that thing you want to always do, which is stay a step ahead. So when the next revolution comes, your stuff doesn't look like garbage. Uh, you know what? Wrap your mind around the fact that Star Wars Episode One was shot in 1080p. And that's as far as they went. Uh, by the way, uh, yeah, I'll save it. I'm out of time. All I will add, though, no extension necessary, no extension. All I will add is just that this this tends to make me think that we might see 6K televisions on the way to 8K, and I thought we'd go straight from 4K to 8K. Uh, I I don't even know about that. I think there's I think there's forward uh, thinking, and then there's more expensive. There's geometrically more expensive forward thinking, and I think 6K was a a good middle ground for where they were at right now. Well, also, 6K scales really well, so when we go to 8K. It's not going to be a problem. 6K is going to look fine. 
Yeah. In fact, 4K scales fine to 8K, so why even bother? Oh, and, and by the way, when you were talking about waste, like uh, by that logic, if you consider this a waste, then you have to have considered a logic for Star Trek The Next Generation to have been shot on film just to be scaled down to standard definition television. So mm -hmm. it's like, and, and then, you know, if it's a waste, it was not a waste for them to hold on to the film archives. So I would say it's definitely not a waste to hold on to the digital space to keep them. What would be a waste is if we skipped the under surveillance segment, which we're not going to do. Like yeah, because then you just lay there on the floor. You're like, why did we even write it? <laughs> uh, hey, Community premieres on Yahoo tomorrow. Uh, it does not have all of the cast, though. Obviously, Chevy Chase left a while ago, uh, but uh, it does have most of them. And are you excited? Can I can I tell you something? I'm thinking about jumping in because I assume I, uh, they are coming out week by week, right? We, t we discussed this earlier, whether or not they would release them all at once or, or release them week by week. I think we ended up on week by week, although the chat room will fix us. Uh, I, I think I'm going to jump back in. I've seen like a few scattered episodes here or there, but but the pressure is so immense to watch uh, Community that maybe I, I just want to dive in and see it. Well, I've got a my, – my big thing is, you know, how easy is, is this going to be to watch on various devices? And I'm happy to report that we did some real-time uh, sort of – uh, check-in this morning on the morning stream and we found out that you can get this app on just about every device every console there is a yahoo screen app is that what they're calling it yahoo eh, screen view something anyway uh i'm i'm fine with doing that that sounds good this would be a great way to see community the biggest problem i have is that i'm feeling about yahoo the way i felt about amazon prime before amazon prime got awesome yeah. And now I don't think Amazon Prime should have ever been in that category. They were meant for greatness. They're doing amazing things now. I don't know what Yahoo's doing, but I should probably just try to chill out and let them do what they're going to do and see how this goes. Should be, you know, should be Dude, uh, Yahoo had a big oil tanker to try to make a U-turn with. It's going to take a little bit of time for them to get back to, to, to quality. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's called Yahoo Screen. And frankly, Scott, I don't think it was wrong to call Amazon Prime subpar when it was subpar. Mm -hmm. And now that it's not anymore, you would be wrong to call it subpar, right? You know, and Yahoo screen, I don't know. It doesn't seem to have anything that compels me yet, except for this. So we'll see. Uh, oh, I, I was trying to remember the names of the actors. Yvette Nicole Brown, who played Shirley, is gone. Also, Jonathan Banks, because he's busy uh, with uh, Better Call Saul, is gone as well. And that other new sci-fi show, which I can't wait for. What's that called Oh, again? right. He's on yeah. The Expanse, yeah. Yeah, Expanse, dude. Woo. Uh, Game of Thrones fifth season will air simultaneously worldwide each week through HBO channels or a partner carrier in places where they don't have an HBO channel. So get ready for your 2 a.m. viewing Vienna. Dude, this is HBO saying, we get it. Piracy. It works. <laughs> you know, it's like we're not going to fight it anymore. Fine. Release all at the same time. Yeah, they know what they're up against. The big the big kicker for me is whether or not HBO Now is going to be able to handle whatever this means or whatever the load will be, because we know Go didn't handle it very well. Uh, and, and Tom, you've talked a ton about this on your show and about how the MLB people are supposed to make this all work right. But I'm I'm going to have this by the time that premiere happens. And I'm really, really hopeful that it holds because uh, I don't want to use people's keys anymore to use Go. Which, and Go kind of sucks. Oh, this is a question real quick. Is Go simultaneously existing alongside Now, or does Now obliterate Go? No, I, now, I guarantee well, I, they're going to HBO Go exists for people who subscribe to HBO through a television provider. HBO Now exists for people who don't. Got it. Yeah. Two separate things. Until, right. you know, eventually one of those ceases to really have any real meaning as an independent entity. Uh, uh, hey, man, uh, Tommy Wiseau, is that how you pronounce it? I think it's Tommy Wiseau. He's Wiseau? The, yeah. The, the guy who did The Room, the best worst movie of all time, is doing a, a, a sitcom on... Uh, do you just turn this up? Just a little bit. Just a little bit of audio on this. Uh, uh, this is a Hulu Plus original. I, I don't know what to think of it. It's called The Neighbors, about a group of neighbors in an apartment building, and Wiseau plays two characters. First four episodes are up at Hulu Plus now. All right, that's all I can take. That's up. I just saw all of the neighbors that I need to see. Oof. Yeah, uh, it looks like garbage to me. Does this take Hulu Plus into the original game, guys? 
<laughs> well, they've it's, tried with other things. Yeah, no, they've got others actually. Quick Draw is really good, and they they did uh, the Misfits uh, past its some of its original seasons on other networks. So there are a lot of Hulu originals. None of them have really captured everyone's imagination the way we, like Transparent did for Amazon or House of Cards did for did for Netflix. So you guys are, I'm getting that you guys think this is not Hulu Plus's House of Cards. Uh, no, not so much. I'm not even sure it's Tommy Wiseau's Tommy Wiseau. Like, that room thing is, is lightning in a bottle. It's terrible because it's not meant to be. It's bad because, and it's campy because they weren't trying to be bad and campy. They just were. And I don't know if you can do that again. Like, I feel like I'm going to watch this and go, oh, now you're, now you're trying to do that thing that we all caught you doing before. And now you're just doing it. And that, to me, is a bit of a turnoff. I mean, you have to see it to be sure, but... You know, if it's truly campy and terrible, then maybe. But I feel like we're getting pulled. Uh, we're, we're having one pulled over on us a little bit. So y'all yeah. watch it and tell me. Yeah, we'll let you know. <laughs> Star Wars Episode Eight is coming May 26th, 2017, 40 years and one day after the first film. Also, Rogue One, the first of the Star Wars side projects that's not in the main uh, schedule, is scheduled for December 16th, 2016, and will star Felicity Jones. She's cool. She was, uh, she's, um... She was in the uh, the movie just now that was uh, the big deal. The guy won Best Actor for... Uh, the oh, uh, the, the uh, 100 Years of Solitude. No, wait. I'm sorry. You're talking about the Stephen Hawking story. The Theory Stephen of Hawking one. Uh, Theory of Everything. Yeah, she was the, she was his wife in that. She's, uh, she's very compelling, and I think that this is going to be great. And I'm super stoked to have a, a strong female lead in a, in a standalone Star Wars film. Um, it's, uh, th that is an exciting project, just sort of period. And the idea that the guy who directed Godzilla is doing this is very exciting to me because when I watched that Godzilla reboot, I kept thinking about Spielberg and Lucas in their prime. There's something about the way that guy made that movie that felt like those movies. And I think if he brings that to the Star Wars universe, we're looking at, you know, a whole lot of fun. Really excited. Heck yeah, man. Hey, uh, what are you watching, Scott? I am watching Better Call Saul. I am watching that a lot, and I'm loving it, and it's everything I'd hoped it would be, and then a bunch more. Um, I'm watching another Amazon uh, original called Bosch. You guys may have talked about it on the show. I don't know. No, I, I haven't seen it yet, but we've had a number of people recommend it both in the chat and, and uh, on the Cord Killers e email. Kind of blown away by it. It's, it's, um, it's basically a, a, another procedural, a police procedural, but the way it's handled, and I know it's based on some books that people love, so there's probably a lot of stuff there that's working for me, but there's something just really real about it. It's filled with actors that you know, but have always played kind of less parts or smaller parts in other things, films and TV, and you see him in this in much more prominent role, especially the lead, uh, Titus Welliver, I think is his name. Uh, you'll know him as soon as you see him. It's fantastic. Was he the man in black on Lost? Is it the same guy? Yes, that's the guy. Yeah. That's the guy. So that's right. And, and yeah, but the other day we were trying to kill ourselves thinking about what show have we seen him in? And it's that guy. But he is really fantastic in it. It just feels real and honest. And I, it's, it's a cut above like the normal CSI, like detective show stuff. And I'm only about halfway through the season, but really, really loving that. Um, it's really good. And then I watched the entirety of Peaky Blinders, top to bottom. Dude, I'm like three episodes in and it's on my like, as soon as I get caught up, I'm going to jump back into it when I have excess bandwidth, but I haven't, I haven't gotten there yet. Is it, is there a moment that it just snaps to and you're like, I can't stop or, cause I mean, it's the first three episodes have been good. I've liked them, but, but I hasn't been, I feel the same way about Downton Abbey where I'm like, okay, I get what this is about. It's a good show. Uh, here's something slightly more pressing over here. Well, I'm a a little bit biased in the sense that you give me a period piece of any kind and I'm kind of all in no matter what. Um, and I love that sort of thing. Also, these accents are really hard to get through. Once you get them, though, you can sort of get more story because you understand what people are saying. But I would say it's about that. It's about episode three for me that things really kicked in. And now I am absolutely in love with that show and I cannot wait for a third season. Stylistically, it's fantastic. The cinematography oh, is amazing on it. Uh, quick yeah. tidbit, uh, I watch everything with the captions on underneath and so I don't ever have that problem of not understanding people. Yeah, I get I get past it pretty qu pretty quickly but, um, you know, to see just these guys are great, great actors. They have incredible supporting cast. I think it is one of the best shows on TV streaming or otherwise. So, Peaky Blinders, a giant recommend for me. I just finished the whole thing the other day and I loved it. Uh, then I've been watching Friends with my wife, whatever. It's on Netflix. Go watch that if you want. It's, you know, stupid the nighttime. Let's go to bed soon comedy. Uh, Justified, I'm playing catch up. I got, uh, well, I'm to the new season. So I just got to watch the new season. I know we're like halfway or almost through with it. 
So uh, I got to get in on that business. But I just finished season five, and that was, of course, fantastic. And still one of my probably top five shows of the last 10 years, and I'm super sad to see it go. But that's what I've been playing or watching. On my docket has been uh, the stuff we'll talk about, spoiler in time, but also I watched the second episode of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Did you watch that, Brian? No, I didn't make it to it. Okay. Uh, oh, no, I take it back. I did. I did. I, I forgot we had talked about how we would talk about this. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. So I we'll liked it more than you did. Time, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in spoiler in time, but I liked it uh, more than you did. Better Call Saul is, I just want to note, because we'll talk about that in spoiler in time too, is available on Sling TV on demand if you miss it live, but you have to wait till like Friday or Saturday. They like make you wait till almost time for the next one. I think they're trying to nudge you into watching live. Uh, I watched The Shield. I watched Last Man on Earth episode three, which is fantastic. Crazy ending. Love it. Cannot wait to see what they do next on that show. It's the Will Forte thing, if you haven't heard about it. Uh, and uh, I can't. I almost can't say anything about it. But the premise is Will Forte is the last man on Earth. That premise is holding, but other things are changing. Uh, and then finally, we should talk about, Brian, the fact that I think all three of us watched at least part of Powers on the PlayStation Network. Uh, yeah, I kind of want to hold the specifics of because I want to talk about scenes and moments and, and thoughts, but uh, I think it's safe to say, spoiler alert for spoiler in time, my review will not be very positive for it. Ooh, all right. I still haven't seen it, so I have no idea. I know I read the comics. I love that series. Uh, I was excited when I heard about it being made. I like that Copley guy, whatever his name is. I never say it right. Uh, Chappie's body double, that guy. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> he is, yeah. I swear, Bloomcamp can't make a movie unless he's involved in some way. So that's just kind of his job. But I really like him, and, and I love that story. Again, it's some really gritty, great comic stuff, a great series. But I have zero idea of how this thing translates, and now... Schwood's got me a little uh, I will spoil it for you. Literally spoil it for you. By the time we are done talking, you will not go see it because you will not want to see it by the time we are done. Oof, man. All right. I'm ready. Yeah, uh, Powers, uh, Brian, uh, this this is the last I'll say about it. Brian told me, like, uh, I got, like, 24 minutes in and then stopped and moved on to watch something else, which was better. Uh, and <laughs> I was like, okay. So I got to 24 minutes and I made it about six more minutes uh, mostly because I was brushing my teeth uh, before I said, you know what? I don't have to watch anymore either. Uh, by the way, we'll also have a special report from our intrepid uh, producer, uh, one Neshcom, Bryce Castillo, who uh, watched two episodes. And uh, when I when he walked in the door, I'm like, see, so he's like, I watched two episodes. I was like, and? And he says, who boy? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that depresses me. I'm so sad about this. It's such a good comic book. They really had me with this. All right, All right let's, let's save it. We'll spoiler it. in time. Yeah. Let's get to the dispatches. They're from the front. What? Dispatches from the front. Hey, man. Uh, uh, I got an email from Steve. Uh, Steve Steve was upset that I liked a thing. He think I wasn't enjoying the That's media he Steve. likes in the right way. He says, Brian, Brian, Brian. Big Hero 6? Really? Dude, I can't believe you bought into that one. Big Hero Scooby-Doo with robots is more like it. It's the most predictable, safe, boring thing I've ever seen from Disney. It did not deserve the best animated feature. I didn't even know it got the best animated feature. I just, I'm pretty sure my review was I liked it a lot. <laughs> uh, looked pretty, but even that was pretty boring too. <laughs> Do you want to show your little girls the best animated feature of 2014? Sit down and watch Song of the Sea with them. I took my niece and she absolutely loved it. Here's the trailer link. And he goes, watch it for free here. Uh, that free link didn't seem to work, but it looked maybe like a bootleg. Um, take it from someone who works in the animation industry. Big Hero 6 was not the best. Not even close. Please watch SOTS. You will not be disappointed. Uh, Steve Dare I say, take it from someone who worked on Song of the Sea? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, yeah. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. Oh, gee. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, Steve, I'm sure your heart is in the right place, and I'm sure it's different when you are the, the craftsman working on the stuff, and I'm sure it's disappointing to see a big studio come out with some vanilla crap. All I'm saying is uh, I had a delightful time with my children, and I really enjoyed it. And, uh, and um, I know your goal was to get me, like, super pumped, about how great uh, Song of the Sea is, uh, uh, but uh, but let's work on maybe saying why Song of the Sea is great instead of just hey man, taking I a get, dump. I get Steve's day, right? 
he 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 just saw his nemesis in the animation industry win Best Picture. His he, he didn't get any respect uh, for the project he worked on, and then he sits down to listen to Cord Killers, and there's Brian Brushwood just talking about Big Hero Six, and Tom Red's like, "Yeah, I loved it too," and it's you know it's, I get that I get the frustration. I understand. All right, well I'll tell you what. I, in fact, I was I was looking at the trailer for it, and John saw it over my shoulder. He's like, "Oh, Song of the Sea. This was a great movie." I was like, oh, this is great. This guy thinks I'm an asshole for liking another movie. <laughs> hey, spoiler alert. You can like both. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what I say. But but again, I will do my best to take a look at it. Uh, I don't know if you've caught on to this theme yet, but people make a lot of recommendations for us. Will wrote in and said, hey, Tom, Brian, and random guest, I have been debating for a while which streaming service to get. Most of my friends have both and are happier with Netflix but also say that there are some things on Hulu Plus that they can't get on Netflix. Can only afford one, and I'm torn between the two. Any advice would be great. Love the show, Will. Uh, dump Hulu or just use the free part of Hulu and get Amazon Prime because you probably already have Prime, so then you've already got that and you don't even know it, and get Netflix. For me, the Prime Netflix is the two-punch thing right now, and it's working for me like a charm. Yeah, um, if you, I 100% agree. You yeah. can fill in here or there. It's like, oh, well, I need a thing that I can't get uh, uh, any other way, so I'll, I'll iTunes that. And there will be another thing I can't get any other way except for, like, straight-up rental of an episode on Amazon. Uh, but the ubiquity of those two services and the quality of stuff they provide, along with all the back catalog they're putting out, they just it's kind of the no-brainer right now. And yeah. maybe these other guys will come in and Hulu will shake it up or Yahoo or whoever, but uh, they're the two you want to – if you're choosing between those two – Probably Netflix if I had to, you know, gun to my head and I can only pick one of the two, at least right now. But most of the time, if you're doing an Amazon thing, you've already got Prime. I mean, that's the value of that thing is it's just like a free thing on top of something you already needed. So if you're I'm, already I'm in that actually going to guess that Will doesn't have Prime. Like he if he's not. down to like I can't afford Hulu and, and Netflix, he probably doesn't afford Amazon Prime either. In which case, I'm going to go with you and say Netflix because you can watch a lot of the Hulu stuff without paying. Yep. yep. Yeah, I agreed. Uh, hey, so I got an email from Joe who says that some people don't mind spoilers, but the, so they always listen to Spoiler in Time. He tries to avoid them and tries to only listen to segments with the shows and movies that he's seen. He says that he emailed us a while back requesting timestamps for Spoiler in Time episodes descriptions. He can't thank us enough for providing that, but still, situation commonly arises when you discuss something on Spoiler in Time that I haven't seen yet, so I skip it. But then weeks, maybe even months later, I see it and I would go back. I'd like to go back and see what my favorite hosts had to say about it in the past that involved a bit of a uh, google foo so he went back through all the it's spoiler in time episodes to see what we covered he converted all the timestamps we provided into time code youtube links for a scrollable searchable clickable list of every episode of movie you've covered in the segments uh he is uh, uh he's put this on uh in a google doc we should really get this uh bit lead to shorten. Uh, I don't know if the chat room can make that happen for us in the next few minutes before we wrap up, but it'll definitely be in the show notes over at uh, cordkillers.com. Uh, uh, he says it's a bit rough around the edges. The shows are in reverse chronological order based on when we covered them, but the episodes are in forward chronological order. That's a little weird. Uh, oh, of course, because, yeah. Uh, also, there weren't episode numbers in a lot of it. Bas basically, he put a lot of work into this, and he definitely deserves yeah. to be applauded and thanked. Uh, the upshot for me is Joe the Keyboard Fanatic started to send me an email that I was reading and thinking like, oh, here's somebody complaining about something. Maybe we can think of a solution. And then went, but I already solved it for you. Here, here is a spreadsheet. And now Joe the Keyboard Fanatic is my favorite listener of the day. Uh, and Joe, you are forgiven from ever supporting us on Patreon ever again because <laughs> that was awesome. You've, you've paid your due, man. That you was fantastic. Totally paid uh, uh, very much appreciated. This is uh, exactly the kind of uh, community that we're proud to be sporting here. Uh, Michael wrote in and said, love the show. Would like to support you on Patreon, but I would have a hard time explaining the expense to my wife. A one-time purchase of a product would be easier. Ergo, I would like to purchase a Cord Killers t-shirt or mug. Any plans? Uh, not, not, I mean, certainly it's in the mix. So we've talked about this. Uh, it's just our bandwidth for new projects is a little bit stretched thin these days. Um, I would guess, let's, let's do this. Let's pledge to have something going into the holiday season this year for our Cord Killers fans to be able to buy. Yeah. Would that be fun? Uh, if only Brian operated a store and then he knew how to do this, mm. uh, I would know to ask him about it. But Man, that was the most effective uh, pushback I ever got. <laughs> so you got. Only if you guys knew an artist who could maybe draw something fun <laughs> and put it on the shirt. 
Yeah, well, I don't know where we'd find somebody like that. Uh, no, I, I think you're right. Uh, I think I think we can do this. But but as as jokey as I am about like Brian already operates the scam stuff, that's a lot of work to do that. And so this is a different thing, uh, which we have to plan accordingly because we don't want you to be ordering stuff and then not get it and all that sort of thing. So you have to we want to do it right. All right. Well, I think we can make it happen by Christmas yeah. for sure. Uh, we got one more email from Jay in luxurious Katy, Texas, where I graduated from high school. Class of 93. Home of my friend, Britt Jones. Yeah. Regarding the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, according to IMDb, it says the first seven episodes of the series were edited with the assumption they would be aired on ABC and or sorry, NBC and adhered to 22 minute time limit that included transition for commercials. After the show was acquired by Netflix, the episodes were re-edited to remove commercial transitions and jokes that were previously omitted due to running time constraints and then later were reinserted. So uh, it sounds like if we want to get the real Netflix Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, we got to get all the way through the first seven episodes. Yeah, and and I guess they've made some tweaks to those first seven, but after the first seven is when they, they, they changed who they're targeting. Yeah. Although, honestly, I mean, we say that, my guess is they probably didn't change that much uh, because they went back and they put in some stuff in those originals that they had to cut out for time. So I, I they probably had a vision of the show from the beginning, don't you think? You managed to do that right as I took a drink. <laughs> yeah, Scott, Scott. I was asking Scott. I mean, I totally they probably, Scott, they probably are not that different. And if the reception has been – so all I've heard is good things about this show. Um, so it doesn't sound like it's been too altered to cause any problems, you know, with people's like of it or not. Um, I've heard a few people who don't like it, and I think Tom may be in that boat. I don't know um, if, if I heard earlier correctly. But I think that what happens with these kind of deals when these things fall apart and they start getting farmed out to, to Netflix or somebody else who's willing to belly up, I'm guessing that if there was anything taken away on the network side it was maybe for content and now on the netflix side they maybe could leave some of that stuff in i don't know if it swears or whatever it is uh but my guess is they're not going to go all right well it's not on the network anymore so cut that whole scene out where they talk about chicken like it doesn't make any sense <laughs> to do that i'll be danged if the chicken lobby's gonna boss us around anymore we're out of the broadcast game free. <laughs> scene pollo <laughs> All right, that is it uh, for this episode of Cord Killers. Thank you, Scott Johnson. Where can folks follow you, find you, purchase you, take you out on a date? Oh, man, I am not nearly as easy as you make me sound. Um, <laughs> I thank you for letting me be here. It's been a pleasure as always. Uh, the best place to find me these days are all over the internet with all kinds of shows and all kinds of cool things. Those shows we mentioned that are nominated for podcast awards, those are all great. I'll tell you one that I wish was nominated that I'm loving, that I love doing. Each and every time it's on, twice a week, I do a little show called The Boop Show, B-O-O-P. It's a video game show where I wrap up the news, do a lot of commentary, have a little fun. Uh, it's growing like crazy. I'm super happy with it. If you want to check that out, you can find it at frogpants.com slash boop, B-O-O-P. Uh, for everything else, follow me on Twitter, at Scott Johnson. Hard to, hard to miss me. Oh, doggone it. I was so proud of myself, guys. I, I totally was like, oh, I haven't gotten a shortened URL. I'm just going to make one real quick. And I made it, and I went to uh, tinyurl.com and made uh, slash spoiler codes. And I was so thrilled. And then I did it, and I realized that I just copied and pasted the show doc, like our planning doc. <laughs> Don't give that one out. And so I was like, oh, doggone it. <laughs> you so. should probably delete that one. Uh, uh, but we will. We will get it, and we will have it in the show notes, uh, I'm sure, as well. So go to Cord Killers. Com. I was able to get it done. Tinyurl.com slash spoiler guide will take you to the fabulous work of Tom the Keyboard Fanatic. And I said fabulous because I want to go to Minnesota. <laughs> Uh, thanks, everybody. Our website is cordkillers.com. Our email address is cordkillers at gmail.com. And, of course, we are live, if you want to watch us record the show, on diamondclub.tv every Monday, with exceptions here and there, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific Time. Hey, guys. Tom and Brian here. We just wanted to say thank you to all of our five dollar patrons who keep us loud live and independent you guys make court killers the production that it is your name appears in the video credits and appears in our hearts and if you'd like to become one of them or see who they are you can go to patreon.com slash court killers you'll need to do more than just go there though you'll have to sign up and you know pledge an amount but unless you just want to see who they are well i mean you can gawk that's a little creepy, isn't it? If you want to be a gawker, let's go. Up to you. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>